We have a question from Bo, and there's a couple things about this question that uh, if you know me, you know that uh, my friends will be doing this right now. Oh no. Let's, let's go through the question then. When doing the kettlebell swing, what degree of hip flexion should I stop at? Well, I tell you, Bo, you know, God made a lot of people and we all look different. I work with professional basketball players who literally, when they're standing there, can put their hands on top of my head like this. And I work with athletes who come up to my belt. We're all different. Our leg lengths are different. Our shanks, legs, the lower leg, lower, but everything's different. Should I hinge as far as I can or until my torso is parallel to the floor every rep, even in light weights? No. You should hinge until you feel your hamstrings pull. If you continue going and you feel them relax, you did something I call folding. Uh, you fold laundry. I want you to be in that bow and arrow relationship. Uh, the chin is the tip of the bow, the, the butt is the other tip of the bow, and the hamstring is the strings. And that's what I want. And then if you go too far over, you do something I call, okay, this is your, you fold. And that's as bad for your back as anything I can think of. Listen, I just did this whole thing called the Kettlebell Home User's Guide. There's a 15 minute version on it uh, for everybody on YouTube. And it's got the basics there. And the longer version is on, of course, uh, danjohnuniversity.com. And it's for members only. It's 45 minutes, 50 minutes, something like that. And it goes through everything. Look at that. Look at the magic drill. Look at the push your butt to the wall drill. Look at the T drill. Learn those positions and then master that. Uh, watch my videos. Get back to me. Thank you.